Benchmark, the voice of business. Presented by LMD. This week's edition of Benchmark, Sri Lanka tourism ups the ante after a record-setting year in 2011. Then in our feature segment, we turn the spotlight on Olaf Eman, General Manager of the Elephant Corridor for his take on the tourism industry. And we wrap up this edition by talking to LMB columnist Samantha Amersinghe about the central bank's roadmap for monetary and financial sector policy this year. That's the lineup for Benchmark this week. Sri Lanka tourism won the race to register an all-time record in arrivals last year and we are setting our sights even higher this year. Welcome to Benchmark, I'm Savitri Rodrigo. In 2011, not only did Sri Lanka surpass its target of hosting 750,000 tourists at the end of November, but more than 850,000 travellers led by our friends from neighbouring India came over to our land like no other. The tourism authorities promptly upped the ante by reaffirming the 950,000 target for this year set previously in a five-year plan. And who knows, we may end 2012 by breaking the one million mark as trends in recent months suggest. The 2011 results reflects an upturn on the prior year of nearly 31%, with India in excess of 170,000, a 35% improvement, the Middle East up 53% to some 57,500 visitors, and East Asia with in excess of 96,000 vacationers, which is 40% more than in 2010, turning out to be amongst the chief contributors to the notably higher influx of tourists. But British travellers to Sri Lanka only just surpassed their numbers in the preceding year, 105,000 and counting, as perhaps Europe's economic storm took its toll. Samantha Amarasinghe touches on the effects of the Eurozone debt crisis on tourism later on in our programme in The Voice of Business. Meanwhile, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka's press release on inflation in 2011 focuses on what went down rather than up. Inflation, as measured by the Colombo Consumers Price Index, fell to 4.9% year-on-year, from 6.2% at the beginning of the year. The small print, as it were, however, has the average annual change in prices at 6.7% versus 6.1% in January. CBSL says that inflation continued to remain at single-digit levels in 2011, and it cites lower prices for rice because of sufficient stocks in the market and a bumper yala harvest, whereas higher crude oil prices had a detrimental effect on cost of living. Moving on, in the export sector, Sri Lanka recorded an increase of almost 12% in November to 879 million US dollars. Better still, the export accounts cumulative revenue for the first 11 months of last year rose by 22% to record $9,581 million compared to the corresponding term in 2010. Textile and garment exports increased by nearly 29% in November to $348 million US dollars and 25% between the 1st of January and the 30th of November 2011 to $3,817 million. But agricultural shipments were only 1 and 10% higher respectively than in 2010. Tea exports were some 7% higher in November, but the gain for the 11 months was under 2%. Meanwhile, on the imports front, the central bank says that the increased demand for investment goods by government infrastructure projects is one of the chief reasons for the massive hike in imports in November by a whopping 78% to 1,980 million US dollars. For the 11 months to 30th November, incoming goods rose by 53%, to $18,417 million in value terms. CBSL says a sharp increase in the price and volume of petroleum products and higher motor vehicle imports contributed to the record spend on trade inflows. And finally, Sri Lanka's trade deficit continues to blow out, some say to unmanageable levels. The trade imbalance for the first 11 months of 2011 stands at a massive $8,835 million, which is more than double what it was for the corresponding term in 2010. 
A significant portion of this deficit, CBSL states, is on account of infrastructure-related projects of the government that have been funded mainly by foreign loans. It adds that in that context, the total inflows to the government, including the proceeds from the international sovereign bond issue, amounted to some $4 billion. We take a quick commercial break now. Spotlight interview coming up.